One shell above the other, each one operating under different conditions. That's a jacketed vessel. Let's learn how to model them, as well as how nozzles make their way in this second chapter of the multi-chamber vessel series. Welcome to the jacketed vessels. We go to the menu File, New. We have pressure vessel selected, then press OK. In the templates dialog, we can see that three of them correspond to a jacketed vessel, one on saddles, one on legs, one on brackets. We will see later how to change the support if needed. We will start with the one on saddles and then press next. Since we are not going to run calculation, please select the options of your preference, then press next. For the time being, I'm not going to input any internal nor external conditions. We are going to wait until we determine what one and two stands for. Then we click next. Again, not running calculation, so no need to change load conditions, then press next. Same thing as before. Here in the geometry dialog, if you are using version 2024 or newer, the default values are already working for you. If not, please make sure that the diameter for the internal chamber is at least smaller than that of the main vessel and that the length is at least the same. Then we are going for location zero. This is the offset between the reference line of the internal chamber and that of the main vessel. Then we press next. Here is the report. And we are going to use in for this example just the default materials. Now I have my jacketed vessel. It is always recommended to check element by element following the geometry order before starting to work with a model for the first time. So to do that, we are going to move the geometry column and the chamber number just after designation to see them more easily. Then we are clicking at the geometry column head to sort the elements in the correct order. Then we're going to click on the first one. This is the first head of the external chamber. Then we can see the shell of the external chamber. If I set it to not transparent, you can see that is the external. Then the second head of the external chamber, then a non-existent shell. You can see that it does not appear in the sketcher nor in the 3D view. Plus it says P equals zero. This is a non-pressure bearing element that we will see just after. Then we have the first head of the internal chamber, the shell of the internal chamber, and then the last head of the internal chamber. To see this element, Better, we are going to double click on it and we see that it has a negative sign. We are going to remove the sign to see it properly. This is the develop form for the jacketed vessel. This first part corresponds to the jacket and this last one corresponds to the internal chamber. This shell is only there for repositioning the internal chamber for setting that offset between reference line one and two. But this is what basically the calculation engine from Autopy Vessel understand, three distinct, three distinct volumes. This shall remind you to what we saw in the first multi-chamber chapter, where there was this vertical vessel with this exact same form, except that it was vertical instead of horizontal. We're going to undo. After this analysis, we know that jacket corresponds to chamber number one, while the internal chamber corresponds to chamber number two. We are ready to set up our design conditions. We double click on the background, go to the design conditions tab. We are going to set the conditions for the jacket, as this is one, set 
0 0.5, 180. And here, 2 is the internal chamber. We are going to set 1 megapascal, 180. But attention, please, here, we need to set the external conditions too. The external conditions of the the, the external conditions of the chamber number two correspond to the internal conditions of chamber one. So basically 0 0.5 and 180. The software, as we just saw, is not capable of knowing what is the jacket or what is the internal and who is enveloped by who. So you, this, this is the only difficulty of jacketed vessels under autopy vessel. Then we said, OK. And we are good to go. So how nozzles are impacted in all of this? Let's go to find out. Click on the menu insert, then nozzle. We select the tag N, then we select we select a nominal diameter, then we put a location 500 and see that apparent is automatically selected. As mentioned, in the beginning of the series, this the the nozzle chamber number will be that of the parent. Then we set orientation to 270 to be on top, and we will assign materials as per default, just to move on. So now my nozzle is at the top, and you can see it was assigned to shell 3105, as you see here. What happens if I want it to be on the internal chamber? I double click and put it and select the internal shell 3107. The parent of a nozzle shall only be modified in cases where two elements are in the same position, basically jacketed vessels. Don't try to modify the parent than the location. That doesn't work that way. In this case, it was easy to see that our nozzle was not well positioned because it was at the top and we have the sketcher telling us. But what if the orientation was zero instead, just looking at us? It would be much harder. For those cases, I recommend looking at the parent in the dialog or taking a look at the report. In the report, you can see that always the parent is mentioned and its properties used. As promised at the beginning of the video, let's change the type of support. We click on the saddle, then right click, erase selection for it to disappear. Then we go to the menu insert, support, and here we select vessel on skirt, we are going to do it on skirt. Then we select OK. The anchor dialog is appearing. I will select a standard to not to have to input all those dimensions. I'm just going to set a location, 500, and that would be it. I would set materials as per default as well as for the ball material. And I say, OK. Now I have my anchor. I still don't have my skirt. I will select on the first element the external head. And I will set insert a copy before selection. And instead of an elliptical head, I will be adding a skirt, which is, I would be adding a length, one meter. And then say OK. And you can see I change my support completely. I even change from a horizontal vessel to a vertical one. For the second part, let's examine the second template available for jacketed vessels. We go to the menu File, New, Pressure Vessel, and select OK. And here we are going to select the partial jacketed vessel on legs. Then press Next. We are not going to run calculation this time either, so we're just going to press next for the example. You can set the options of your preference. The assigned conditions should be set 
but we will be doing that once we determine what corresponds to each chamber number. Nor what conditions since no calculation, same thing for operating conditions. And here in the geometry, we are going to set a diameter of 2000 and a distance between tangent lines of 2 meters to the internal summer will have a diameter smaller than that of the main vessel and the length will be slightly bigger. Then my location will be 100. That will be okay. Then I say next. No, no special thought for the report. And materials, I will, we will just apply it by, as per default. Then set finish. Now I have my jacketed vessel on legs. As we did with the first model, we are going to go element by element following the geometry order. The first element corresponds to the elliptical head of the external chamber. Then we can see the shell of the external chamber, the sealer closure, this shell that again does not exist, nor in the sketcher, nor in the 3D drawing, it is P equals zero. Then the elliptical head of the internal chamber, the shell of the internal chamber, a shell that does not exist and is as well P equals zero, a shell of the external part of the internal chamber, and then a body flange and a, and a bolted cover. Let's examine the non pressure varying elements. The first one, we double click and we see that it's negative. It's serving the same purpose as in the first model. So repositioning the external chamber regarding the internal. So good so far. What about the second one? Well, let's double click. It's almost no length, no pressure bearing element. I will make it a little bigger so for you to see. And you can see that it's dividing the internal chamber in two. The one under the jacket than that exposed to the ambient. This is because, as we saw in the first chapter of multi-chamber vessels, in autopilot vessel chambers are a group of consecutive elements under the same working conditions, which is the case of this internal chamber. The part that is exposed to the ambient is subjected to different external conditions that that under the jacket. Knowing that, we are ready to input our design conditions. So we double click in the background, go to the design conditions tab, and let's fill those conditions. For the jacket, we will have in 0 0.5 and 150. It exposed to the ambient. Then the part of the internal chamber that is under the jacket, we will have 1 megapascal and 180 as internal condition. And since it's under the jacket, we will have, we'll be having the conditions of the jacket. Then for the third section, the internal chamber exposed to the ambient, we will of course have the same internal conditions as chamber two. But for the external conditions, those are going to be the same as chamber one, not chamber two. That is the difference and the reason for existing a third chamber. Press OK and we're ready to go. Thank you very much for watching.